right, we're back. It's a different day, but we're continuing on. Here's what we've accomplished. Got the rear end in the Jeep. Uh, keep in mind that this is a temporary thing we've got going on at the moment. Uh, everything right now is just to get it on its wheels so we can get it outdoors. Uh, I had to do this by myself with no help. It's usually not that big of a deal on a hoist or whatnot, but we got her all in there. So springs aren't straight, nothing's adjusted, nothing's lined up the way it's supposed to be yet. It's just together. Uh, got everything mounted on our frames here. And we also did go through a big, long, miserable POR15 process that we did not get on camera. And honestly, I don't even know how I would. Uh, the POR15, even though it is excellent, is one of the sloppiest, messiest, pain in the ass products I've ever worked with. It's probably my fault the way I was doing it, but using a sponge, using a brush or whatever they suggest is just miserable. It gets all over everything. It's actually been a week and I've got it on me in places that it will not wash off. I even put on a whole tieback suit, taped gloves to me <laughs> and everything I could, it still gets through you or gets through to you. It's messy. Uh, it's probably a lot better situation to spray it. I don't have the method of doing that here in this shop right now, so it got manually installed. Uh, it's a miserable process. Worth it in the long run, but it's miserable. Uh, where we're at now is we are gonna be putting the front end in the vehicle. Uh, I've still gotta put the cross member and mount for the front control arms from Rough Country. We've still got to install that. We got that all painted back up yesterday. Rear end, or front end here you see is ready to go in. Uh, it's gonna be the same situation. Everything's gonna be put in temporarily and then uh, so we can roll the Jeep out of here. Then there's caster to set and with pinion angle. You gotta do pinion angle in the rear, get everything centered in the wheel or in the wheel wells the way they're supposed to be. A lot of steps to that. That's gonna be later on. Another thing we did is uh, decided to paint the engine bay. I really liked the idea of having it the body color, but it was so scratched up and just looked so ugly that once I started spraying I got a little carried away. And I don't think that looks too bad. Uh, put a few coats on there. It's so darn dry and dusty here, and we're definitely not in any kind of professional paint booth, but I did get a little bit of dirt nibs in there, some dust. It is what it is, that's how it's gonna be. So, we're gonna get underneath here, get that uh, cross member installed. We'll walk over there and show you that real quick, but we're gonna get that installed. Then we can put the control arms and the front axle and the front springs in here and set this thing down on its wheels for the first time in I think about six months. But let me show you this cross member from Rough Country. All right, well, this is the cross member that you get from Rough Country when you get their long arm kit. Uh, this is the transmission cross member and the front lower control arm mount all in one. Uh, it also has a pretty badass uh, skid plate for the transfer case. Transfer case does kind of stick down there a little bit so it's nice to have some protection. I've actually drug it on a couple things. Uh, and I don't know how well you can see it here, but that skid plate has touched, uh, at least touched the dirt a couple times. Uh, this thing's pretty thick and heavy duty. Um, I've had to do some changes, cut some different holes and a couple different things here. Keep in mind, we're not running the factory drivetrain. This has got all GM drivetrain. So we've had to change some things around to make it all work. Still in the process of figuring out what's going to be a good transmission mount on this. Um, not really going to be able to figure that out the best until we get the motor and transmission in there and then play with a couple different ideas. Uh, this is going to go in. This mounts on using most of the original uh, mounting points for the factory cross member. Uh, but then there's two other spots here. Two bolts to go through there. Two bolts to go through there and that holds it all up in place and then we can mount that front axle getting pretty excited to have this thing on its wheels again it's been so long so it'd be nice to be able to move this around and also as i've shown you guys before 
the shop has become pretty clustered over the winter and this Jeep has been spread out all over the place. Once I can roll this outside, uh, wash six months of dust and crap off from it, power wash underneath where I didn't wash it out very good, uh, and also get this shop cleaned up and organized for the next step. I've been waiting to bring the engine home. Don't want it here in this environment with all the metal grinding and metal shavings and sawdust and so on that's around here. Uh, I want to get this cleaned up, get a lot of that out of here so we can bring the motor home and start working towards putting that in there. We've got a lot of work to do when it comes to that. This has already had an LS in it, but with this big bore motor that's going in, uh, exhaust is pretty crucial and this takes some pretty big header tubes. We're still not quite sure what route we're gonna take, but we'll talk about that in another episode. So we're gonna get underneath here, get this cross member installed and uh, start working towards the steps of getting that front axle in there. Let's get this thing on some wheels. So stand back and watch. All right, well, we've got the uh, cross member installed. Let's get down here and we'll show this to you guys. Oh, so definitely a lay under the vehicle situation. So here we go. Here's the cross member. Um, kind of hard to get a really good angle. I don't have all the bolts into it. Um, has a combination of 12 of them that hold it into place. Uh, there's these two here that go in place uh, two of the existing cross member bolt holes uh, go up inside the frame rail here. Uh, you've got two here. There, it doesn't take very long bolts for there. You can see that, um, that pinches that in there. And then kind of like what we had in the rear, except they're smaller ones. Uh, we've got two captive nuts that are gonna go up inside here, up through here. And then there's a bolt here and a bolt over here that's going to go through on both sides and that holds it all in place and sandwiches the frame in there um, this thing does move uh, you can move it side to side um, so you want to make sure when you're doing your final install that you have it centered properly uh, right now you see that i don't have it tightened down uh, we'll do that right as we speak So that's in there for now. Uh, this is going to be enough for what we've got to do to put the suspension in here and be able to roll it around. Uh, so next step here, we're going to pull that axle forward here, get the control arms, mount the control arms, put the springs in there. We got to put the track bar on and I don't think I'm hooking up any steering uh, other than the left and right wheels and knuckles are attached with the connecting tie rod. Uh, other than that, that's about all we're going to do. We'll just kick the wheels to move it around for now. Uh, I still don't have the steering shaft in yet. Uh, I got to put the steering shaft back in. Plus, without the dash in, uh, we can't even put a steering wheel in here. So, um, it's just going to be uh, basically a roller. Uh, let's move over to that spot. Let's get this axle put in. Get me off my back and see if we can get this thing moved around. Real quickly here, one thing I wanted to show you guys was the difference between the Johnny joint and the Rough Country joint. Uh, I showed you guys in the last episode, but uh, the Rough Country joints I had were the worn out, nasty ones. So here's a brand new one. You look at that, you see, you know, it looks like a pretty badass joint. No reason to think that it's gonna be inferior, but my God, is it. Uh, the construction on the inside is completely different. Uh, of course, the Johnny joint has a very considerably deeper uh, snap ring in there. Uh, there's a snap ring side on here. can somewhat see it. They don't sit in there far enough, and like we've discussed before, they pop right out of there. So that's not a positive. Uh, haven't had any trouble with the Johnny joints coming apart, so we'll see how that goes. But. And our roads here in Michigan, which are horrendous, um, <laughs> any pothole and everything you take just wears this plastic bushing that's inside of here out and these things clatter and clunk and rattle. And they also creak and sound pretty horrendous even when you're driving around a parking lot sometimes and just, just sounds horrendous. So 
there you go. There's a little bit of the differences. I'm not going to take them apart and look at all the inside pieces, but Johnny joint right here is the standard. Rough country joint right here is the standard for garbage. So I will admit that the rest of the rough country kit is great and I have no complaints about any of the rest of it. Uh, I've used it off road tremendously in all kinds of situations. It twists, it doesn't bind. I've had no complaints. The only thing is these, but you get an upgrade. That's how they get it in the price point that they're in. These things probably cost barely anything, even though they're big and they look like a real expensive part. Uh, they're a cheap piece of crap. Okay, so front axle's in. It's only attached right now at the frame, at the cross member, front lower control arm mounts, whatever you want to call them. We still got to at least put the track bar in there to hold everything in place. And we're going to have to roll into town here and go to the other shop and go pick up some different wheels and tires, some stockers that I have for this thing so we can roll it around. Uh, the wheels that I run are off of JK. Uh, there's some Rubicon rims right now. They're stacked up somewhere where I can't really show them to you. But with the offset on those, uh, the only way to make them work properly on here is with the inch and a half wheel spacers. Uh, I know that there's a lot of debate about wheel spacers. A lot of people say don't use them, blah, blah, blah. Guess what? We're using wheel spacers. So you guys do whatever you're comfortable with. In my case, I'll be running wheel spacers. I'm comfortable with that. I have no problem with it. I'm using inch and a half. Uh, sets everything out quite nicely. And the way the stance that this thing sits at with those is perfect in my opinion. Uh, when you go too long on spacers, start getting up, I mean, even an inch and a half, any bit you add uh, does change your scrub radius for where it turns. So as opposed to the wheel being right here, turning on a pretty negative basis, the further you move the wheel out, the more the wheel turns like this. That can make bump steer, that's more stress and strain on the ball joints and wheel bearing. Uh, there's, there's negatives, but guess what? It's what we're gonna be using. And ultimately, uh, as far as wheel offset versus wheel spacers go, I mean, I guess wheel spacers are more fasteners, more hardware, can potentially be a weak link, but the offset on the rim does the same exact thing with the scrub race radius. So, I mean, it is what it is, but we we'll am gonna go pick up those wheels. Uh, then we'll get the track bar put on here, hold the front end in place, and then we can be able to set this thing down on the ground for the first time since a uh, long time ago last year. So. Go grab those, get those on, and just keep moving to the next steps. Okay, well, we've made some progress here. I uh, apologize, we missed a bunch of it on camera. Apparently, I was hitting record when I was stopping and vice versa. We've all been there. But here's where we're at. Jeep's outside, got her washed off. Looks like a big girl with skinny legs. Uh, it's in the sunlight for the very first time in <laughs> at least eight months. Uh, a lot better viewing, uh, being able to see what's going on here. And was able to get underneath and do some seriously needed degreasing and power washing. Uh, we had a AN fitting come loose on the trans line uh, twice last year. Uh, once while I was driving 90 down the highway, I mean 70, the speed limit down the highway and notice i had a big cloud behind me and it was spraying a lot of trans fluid all over the bottom of the damn vehicle and the exhaust and well that coats everything and collects dirt and when you got the whole drivetrain in the vehicle it's about impossible to clean and degrease all that but hey laying underneath the vehicle on a gravel driveway eating degreaser and mud and greasy crap uh, is real satisfying as well but it was a necessary evil, and she's nice and clean. So, got her sitting out here, just uh, letting letting her dry out. Got some water inside while we're power washing it. We don't have seat belt bolts in there, and flat, uh, firewalls open. So, you know, we got a little bit of water up in here, but it's a Jeep. It's no big deal. Uh, it's nice to have her sitting on its wheels again. Uh, temporary wheels, of course, but... Uh, things are 
finally feeling like something's happening here. This thing has been indoors since, well, <laughs> I don't even remember, last year sometime, and it's June now. So it's it's been inside for a long time. And it's real frustrating that you can wash and wash and wash, and then you still find spots that look clean when they're wet. And once they dry, they're not. Uh, see the engine compartment a little bit better. I know black is the cheap way out. Uh, I wouldn't have minded getting it repainted in the body color. But we don't even know what body color we're going to be sticking with in the long run. I kind of want it to look stock on the outside. But the more things go, uh, the less likely that's going to be to happen. Uh, rockers. I definitely have found a little bit of rust on the rockers. And this one was tender enough that the jack stand actually smushed up into the pinch seam. But we're probably going to be cutting those off. I've seen a couple videos where guys are... Uh, Cutting the rockers out and putting some uh, like 2x4 steel channel in here, using those for rock rails. That kind of kills two birds with one stone because we want some rock rails or rock sliders or whatever you want to call them anyways. And we definitely want to remove the rust out of the vehicle. These are pretty much the only spots that have any rust. There's right back here in this corner. Now keep in mind this is an overland so this had the factory rock sliders and guess what? They trap mud, dirt, and salt in there and create some corrosion. We'll walk over here to the other side, see the other side. It's actually a little bit worse, actually considerably worse. But we go and cut this all out here and put those, um, make rock rails in here. Then that's going to eliminate that whole situation. Uh, we've been doing some vice grip rebuilding on everything here. Uh, black spray paint, man, does it make everything look pretty. You could sure make some ugly old crap look good. Even if you forgot the receipts at your mom's house. So that's pretty much where we're at for today. We're gonna be cleaning out the shop, trying to get this more organized. I've already swept up piles and piles of metal shavings. Everything's just kind of been conglomerating around the Jeep because it's been grounded in one spot for so long. So we got a big old pile of Jeep parts and various other projects around here that need to get consolidated and organized and put away in a better spot here in the next couple weeks we're going to be bringing home the old lsx and start sliding that in there as i mentioned before the exhaust or the headers are going to be the fun part ended up getting some uh, z06 exhaust manifolds uh, ls7 z06 manifolds i want it quite rather quiet uh i don't want it ridiculous sounding the last version of it with the six liter exhaust I had on there was just way too damn loud. And maybe I'm getting a little too old, but I want her nice and quiet and comfortable. Quiet's relative, but mostly quiet, comfortable until we put the hammer down. So we might have to build some headers. It's a little bit out of my skill level, but I got a good welder. We'll see how that works out. Not sure of the plan reason with the z06 manifolds that we might be going a different route is i'll have to show you in the, one of these further episodes but with the six bolt cylinder heads on the lsx those extra bolts just happen to be in the way of the manifold so we've got a couple other couple tricks up our sleeves that we're going to try with that but until it's sitting in the jeep and we know exactly what we're working with all we can do is assume what might happen but Thanks for watching. 